Welcome back to the Lights Out Podcast. Good time stories for boys and girls for when the lights go out. Good evening, boys and girls. Are you ready for bed? Are you all snuggled up nice and warm and ready for another Lights Out bedtime story? Well, you're in for a treat tonight. Because tonight's story is just called Monsters by Russell Holborn and Quentin Blake. And a big shout out goes to all you Spotify fans who are clicking the follow button like mad, reaching 2021 followers by 2021, January 1st. And if we do that, I want to give away 2021 of my books. That's a big number, so click that button. Let's get back on to the story. Now, if you remember, I ain't going to paint no more. And the Purple Crayon Herald. This is kind of a nice follow-on because it's about a boy who liked to draw monsters. Once upon a time, John liked to draw monsters. He drew monsters that looked like puddings with teeth. He drew monsters that had hundreds of eyes and odd numbers of ears. He drew scaly monsters furry monsters, vegetable and mineral monsters, and unheard of monsters that were so monstrous they had to be invisible so they wouldn't scare themselves to death. He drew red, yellow, blue, green and purple monsters, and he drew spotted monsters and monsters that were all blotchy with different colours. All John's monsters were violent. They fought with passing strangers and random spacecraft, and they fought with one another, and if they found themselves alone, they made threatening noises to themselves while waiting for somebody ugly to turn up. They said, and John's monsters breed smoke and fire, and they used their teeth and their claws when they fought. They also guided missiles Lasers, bows and arrows, spears, clubs and rocks. John was drawing a battle between an army of red monsters wielding hammers and an army of green monsters with tongs when his mother looked over his shoulders. Don't you ever get tired of drawing monsters, she said. Not really, said John. Monsters are my favourite thing to draw. Still, said Mum. There are so many other nice things to draw. There are houses and trees and birds and animals. Monsters are animals, said John. I mean real animals, like dogs and cats, said Mum. Or even lions or tigers, if you like. Monsters are real, said John. Have you ever seen one, said Mum. I've seen them on TV, said John. Yes, said Mum. Have you ever seen one just walking around? Not yet, said John. Everything all right at school, said Dad. Getting on with the other boys and all that. Yes, said John. And your teachers, said Mum. What about them? They're all right, said John. Any trouble with any of your subjects, said Dad. I used to have a terrible time with maths and history. I'm not having any trouble with anything, said John. Have you got any really big pieces of paper? I've got some big sheets of brown wrapping paper, said Mum, and she gave them to John. Thank you, said John. He took the wrapping paper and his felt-tip pens up to his room. When Mum and Dad came up to kiss John goodnight, they saw he'd done a drawing that filled up the whole sheets of wrapping paper. What is it? said Dad. It's the tip of a tail, said John. Oh, it's very spiky, said Mum. Where's the rest of it, whatever it is? Coming, said John. Must be pretty big, said Dad. I guess so said John. What will it be? said Mum. I don't know, 
said John. I haven't seen the other end of it yet. When John was asleep, Dad said to Mum, That drawing doesn't seem quite the same as John's other drawings. No, said Mum, it doesn't. It seems somehow more serious than the others. Oh, it does, said Dad. And if just the tip of the tail filled up that big piece of paper, the whole thing must be very serious indeed. The next day, Mum and Dad went to see John's art teacher, Mr Spludge. What do you think of John's drawings? said Dad. First rate, said Mr Spludge. His monsters are in a class by themselves. Mum showed him the drawing on the brown paper. Uh, what do you think of this one? she said. Oh, it's, it, this tale is very well done, said Mr Spludge. It almost jumps right off the paper at you, doesn't it? John says it's the rest of it's coming, said Dad. Should be quite impressive, said Mr Spludge. You're not bothered about it, said Dad. Why should I be bothered? said Mr. Spludge. Well, it's such a serious looking tale, said Dad, and whatever's on the other end of it is going to be very big. Oh, I shouldn't worry about that if I were you, said Mr. Spludge. Boys are naturally a little monstrous. The next morning, Mum and Dad found another drawing on John's desk. I think we ought to talk to Dr. Plunger said Dad. So they went to Dr. Plunger's office and showed him the two drawings. This could be something very big, said Dr. Plunger. That's what we thought, said Mum. Are you worried about it? said Dr. Plunger. Oh yes we are, said Dad. Dr. Plunger wrote out a prescription. Take these tablets as directed, he said. And if the drawings continue, let me see the next one. The next day, Mum and Dad brought in a third drawing. Oh dear me, said Dr Plunger. Perhaps I'd better have a chat with John. When Mum and Dad brought John in for a chat, Dr Plunger said, Tell me about these drawings, John. I haven't got a piece of paper that's big enough, said John. That's why I have to do it this way. Looks as if it's going to be something really big, said Dr. Plunger. I can't say till I've seen the whole thing, said John. If I give you some felt tip pens and some brown wrapping paper, said Dr. Plunger, do you think you could finish it for me? Are you sure you want me to, said John. Yes, indeed, said Dr. Plunger. All right, then, said John, and when Dr. Plunger gave him the paper and pens, he began to draw very fast, moving from one sheet of brown paper to the next. In the waiting room, Mum and Dad heard a noise like two or three heavy metal rock bands playing at once. There wasn't a lot of music to it, it was mostly thumping and bumping and crashing around. And after a while it stopped, and they heard John say, See you. Then he came out of Dr. Plunger's office with a big smile on his face. Quite a lively time you seem to be having in there, said Dad. You looked very relaxed, said Mum. I feel pretty good, actually, said John. Did I hear you say you'd been seeing him again, said Mum. Who, said John. Dr. Plunger, said Mum. I don't think so, said John. Get everything worked out then, did you? said Dad. Oh yes, said John. Everything worked out. No more monster drawings, said Mum. Drawings, said John, as the door behind him slowly opened. Who needs drawings? Oh, the end. Wow, that was a great book about a boy who liked to draw monsters. 
and there's lots of monsters in this book it's absolutely fabulous and the ending is a little little bit scary maybe but that's a book called monsters by russell holborn and quentin blake you have to see it to believe it here on the lights out podcast bedtime stories for boys and girls when the lights go out